Hey everybody, this is Sean. It's gonna walk you guys through how to s export an animation from Maya. So I got this set up and import it into Unreal and place it in your test maps. Something game animators do all the time. It's not super complicated, but you do have to kind of get used to it. And there's some, you know, a little bit of, little bit of details on it, but I'll walk you through it. Okay, so I have this file set up. I have a rig. The rigs match from Unreal already in Maya. Uh, I set up so just poses. It's not an animation or anything, just to kind of test the rig out and make it not a T pose. You'll see in the outliner that I've got my skeletons over here on the side. I named them. When I set this scene up, I made sure that I was setting it up with the reference editor so I can con control some variables on how I have two characters in one scene. Not required, but it's pretty helpful. So to get to the exporter, you just go File Game Exporter. This is a plugin that comes with Maya. Uh, basically just exports FBXs, which is essentially the file format that Unreal reads. So what I'm going to do on this exporter is show you that there's a couple tabs up here. I think it shows up as model by default. So if you have a model that's not already in Unreal, in this case we're just using the Unreal mannequin, but if you have a model that's not already there, you have to export it from here, which will export the mesh and the skeleton. The animation clip is just exporting the skeleton. That's this guy. Because you, you animate off of all of these controls, these nerve splines, that are constrained to the skeletons. Oh, unhide the skeleton. And you're basically just exporting the skeleton for the animation data. So I'll add two clips. Oh, it's playing. Stop. Fill in the frame numbers. It automatically set this to the right value. I think it's because I have this time slider set. So I go ahead and plus again, and then it did 1 to 95. But in this case, I do want 1 to 10. I do want 2 because I'm exporting the gray guy and I'm exporting the green guy. So I'm just going to name this gray pose person and name this one green pose person. If they're both chapped, it'll export both, but I'm going to do it one at a time because I'm going to use export selection. I think it does export all by default, and in that case it exports all the things, which you may end up with some weird results. We want the animation data to be just the things that are animating as much as possible, so I'm going to export selection, and then export the gray guy first, which is this hierarchy, and then you have to set the path. I had this filled in from earlier. I'll set it again. You just hit the little folder, find wherever your project is. I'll go there, then select folder, and then now I can click export, and it'll say export successful. I'm going to open up a new version of Maya. A lot of times, if you're just getting started and you're trying to debug stuff, it's important to understand what you're exporting. So if I take that exported file, which is here, date modified, it's gray pose person. And I can just drag this .fbx into Maya, hit import, and then it'll bring this in and I can see it imported all these joints. Yeah, they're gray. The gray stuff means they're hidden, so I'm going to grab all the gray stuff and unhide. So it looks like everything's there, but this is this is basically an animation. So if this was animated, it'd be moving around doing stuff. So I'll do the same process with the other skeleton. Grab that root, switch to this, click export. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm exported. I got two scenes here. Go back over here, click import, import asset, grab these guys, open. It will automatically sort of detect what it is, because Unreal's pretty good about if it sees a skeleton, 
with a bunch of keyframes. It'll say, do you want to make a new skeleton or do you want to use an existing one? So we're going to import it onto this skeleton. Just so it automatically came up as import animation because I think it just knew it was an animation. I'm not really sure. It always just works. Uh, import all. So they're both coming in and they got they go right onto that skeleton that I selected. So you can see if I go to this skeleton, this is the skeleton I imported it onto. And then here's the mesh information for like LED settings. And then over here I got my animation data. So he's like posed in the cool pose. And then in the previewer here, I can click this guy and see the other pose, the punchy pose. Um, you do want to save this as soon as you import it. The little star means it's not saved. So I'm going to save this. That way I can, re when I reopen this, it'll show up. Uh, and then if you want it in your test map, all you got to do is drag it in there. So for the pose assignment, all you got to do is turn in, I think it was three poses. So you just do three poses, drag it into your test map, and grab a video. And that's all you got to do. Uh, I'm going to run this. So now, here's my third person test map. I got my guys posed over here and dropped in the level. They're just skeletons right now. They don't have any like AI or controls or anything. They're just like dudes hanging out. They are, they, it is cool that they have like physics so I can't like walk into them and I can walk on top of them. So it's pretty neat. I like it. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention. When you pull them in together, they, they kind of automatically line up on top of each other. If you drag them in one at a time, you don't get that like automatic lineup because the poses I made specifically to like work well with each other. It's a little bit hard to like eyeball this and get it exactly in the right spot. And sometimes you might want to like rotate them for whatever reason you're working on them. And it gets really hard to like get the exactly the right position you want. So you can pull them in together and then keep them together and then I think you can rotate them together. You can cool. Or if you get them offset, and they're you're not really sure where they're supposed to line up. Set them both that back to zero by hitting these little green or yellow yellow arrows I just clicked on. And then now they'll move together. Now we know they're locked down, and we can just kind of move it around wherever we want to put it. Maybe I'll put these guys up top like uh, proper statues. In Unreal, you haven't caught this yet. If you press end, things will drop to the ground. Bam. G will display, will turn off all the game stuff. You can kind of review it. And then I'll see, is it still working? Yeah, they're up there doing their thing, punching dudes. Okay, cool. That's it. That's how you get a animation data out of Maya and into Unreal. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.